First of all, I'm going to invite David Lennox to come and say a few words. I've actually got three A's for you this afternoon. All right. Uh, at your induction, I remember standing up and saying that I believed that you would be a pastor to the pastor. And I believe that's been the case, John. It's been true. Uh, and I had good reason to say that, because, as you know, you and I worked together before you were a regional minister. And you and Janet helped me out in my role as regional tutor uh, and doing some work in that context. Uh, and so, therefore, I was quite aware of your pastoral skills. And, and I believe, John, I have to say, as an ex-chief examiner, I think I'll award you a grade A <laughs> for your pastoral work that was quite evident that you have fulfilled that role which was required under regional minister to be a pastor to the pastors. That's my first point, my first day. I know I've got a limited time, so I'm going to have to press on. But in my experience with you, uh, alongside the work that I did as a, a regional tutor and with Janet as part of my support group, I was aware of your academic background, which... Uh, in its early days would be described as a bit thin. Yes? Uh, left school with uh, minimum qualifications. Uh, ended up being what would be termed a sparky, is that right? Yeah? But the amazing thing with John is that he not only got a first degree, he's got a master's degree, and he's got a doctorate. And that, knowing his academic background, I think is quite an incredible feat. To have someone who's gone down that route and shown academic prowess. So, yes, John, I appreciate your academic prowess. I appreciate the fact that we sharpened our minds together and had a great deal of discussion in that context. So, again, I, I would say I would award you a grade A. My third point is, <laughs> is administration. And I have a little bit of difficulty here in uh, distinguishing whether in fact an A should be awarded. Uh, and why I have a little bit of difficulty is I remember quite distinctly often driving up to your home at Sherburne to see you in the upstairs bedroom window printing off the papers that we were going to have at our meeting, which was about to take place. And I got the distinct impression that John would be described as a last minute merchant. Is that true, Janet? Yes. He would prepare things at the very last minute. We would get it, but you know, it was a bit tight sometimes in that sort of area. And of course, in amongst all of this, and administration, John used to have to do some arrangements. And some of the arrangements were with our colleagues and friends from Baptist House, and we would be graced with a visit from none other than the General Secretary, which in our day was David Coffey. And when DC came, we knew that DC was interested in football. Well, we enlightened him and uh, took him to see, uh, through Paul Merton's help, to see Newcastle United. Uh, but on another occasion, another occasion, we thought, well, it would be good if we took him to Middlesbrough, which was great. And we had it all in mind to go to Middlesbrough, only to find out that at the last minute, the match had been cancelled or rearranged, I don't know, but it wasn't going to happen. So John, in his wisdom, decided we would go to Sunderland. Now I had a problem. <laughs> I, I stretched a point during Mission England to stand on the pitch at Roker Park and act as a supervisory councillor. 
But to go and watch Sunderland was a little bit too far as far as I was concerned. So I had to say to John, John, I really cannot join you at the Sunderland match. And I appreciate the fact that I've heard on the TV these days that, and dare I say it in Sunderland, that some of the Sunderland supporters say we don't go for the football, we just go for the fellowship. Uh, you know, one with each other, talking to each other during the match. Uh, and I thought, well, I can't do that. I can't go and watch a Sunderland match. And I've got to say, DC uh, wasn't very pleased at my attitude. You know, he said, football's football, David. Yeah, I don't think you should be declining that. And I said, John, I, you know, I think your arrangements are not right. <coughs> you know, I don't think we should go to Sunderland. And it, it proved correct. Because I got a text message not long after the match had started to say that it had been abandoned because of weather conditions. <laughs> so it worked out well for me in that context, really. So yes, you know, and that sort of thing. So I won't go on too long because I'm limited time. So in a case of administration, I don't know whether a grade A would be particularly appropriate in the light of those little experiences. And there are many more experiences that we could list in that sort of context. But I'm very grateful both to you and to Janet for the way in which we've been able to work together in your early days as uh, regional minister. And of course I couldn't finish by not sharing a verse of scripture with you. I really do feel this particular verse is appropriate to you, John, and to you, Janet. Philippians 1, verse 6, probably well known to most of you. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And I believe that to be the case. A very blessing to you both in your so-called retirement. <laughs>I think as, as life has gone on, you've obviously developed a lot. So as the moderator, um, I can moderate the exam results and give you an A-plus for detail. <laughs> and um, now um, we've had a colleague from the past, and we're going to have a, a fellow regional minister from the present, and uh, Graham Ensor is going to come and share. <laughs> well, John, what a privilege. Uh, to come today to give thanks uh, for your ministry. Well, actually, uh, as I was driving up, I thought uh, maybe today's the closest to heaven you're going to get before you get there. Because uh, today's the sort of day when uh, all the comments that are made are only going to be good and nobody's going to remember anything that's bad, just like it's going to be when you get to heaven and stand before Jesus. But uh, we're, we're thankful for your ministry in so many different ways. As I got up early this morning... I thought, what shall I say? I thought, actually, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of three different groups as I find myself here today. I'm speaking on behalf of your national colleagues, uh, regional team leaders, all those national colleagues that you've worked alongside over many years who want to say thank you for your ministry, for the many different things that you've brought to national ministry. They valued everything that you've brought. I thought of the ways in which you've enriched national conversations. And often you've helped us to keep the main thing the main thing. Because if you're ever involved in national conversations, we're very good at going away from the main thing. And uh, you've reminded us what it means to be Baptist. Not with a big B, not with a capital B, uh, but, but what it means to be a principal Baptist. What it means to be a discerning community, the whole body of Christ, to be involved in this process together. Listening to God and listening to each other as we seek, where, we, we seek to discern where he's taken us nationally. We, we've so much benefited from your insight and your wisdom and your experience, because there's no doubt about it, you have been around the block many times, John. And <laughs> church life, everybody will know uh, that we tend to go around the same block again and again and again. But actually, as you've been around the same block again and again and again, you've not only brought great experience, but your passion and your desire to follow Jesus has never diminished. It's always been there. So you've been a great gift to national colleagues. At times, you've calmed the waters, times you've been an irritant in a good way I'd want to say uh, in a good way 
that you've caused anxiety in the system. And it's important within denominational life that there is anxiety in the system because anxiety brings about change and we all need to change all of the time. But underlying everything that's gone on nationally, there's been a deep spirituality about everything that you've brought, John. So we're, we're really thankful. My national colleagues would want to say, uh, and really I'll say it to everybody else, not just to you, they'd want their voice to be here to say thank you for, for all that you've brought uh, on that national scene. But I think also, um, I thought, uh, I do speak also on behalf of the Yorkshire Baptist Association. I, I mean, I, I, I come from the Yorkshire Baptist Association, but I think there's a special connectivity. There's, there's a connectivity between lots of associations, but there is a special connectivity between the NBA and the YBA, not just because we share a border, uh, but because we had the same super uh, before we uh, 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 sort of reorganised ourselves back in 2002. We share the same ministers' conference. Some people have really valued that, ministers who've been along there. And we face the same challenges and opportunities, which, if truth be known, lots of our southern colleagues know little about. And so I, I want to say you, you've always been a great friend to the Yorkshire Baptist Association. We've always really appreciated you. I've always found it really helpful to connect with you. You've been one of the first people that, that I've always gone to in the challenges that we faced in Yorkshire. Because I know that in you, there is somebody who will understand, who's not only able to listen, but truly understands many of the things that we're facing. So uh, it's been good to pray with you, to discern with you, to collaborate and work with you. And so the trustees of the association, I know that because I know I'm here today, and the churches of the association want to say thank you to you for the many ways, not which you've just served this association, uh, but you, your, your ministry has been much wider than that. And then the, the third thing, uh, uh, this is the most important thing really, I, I want to say uh, thank you personally, uh, personally to you. Um, somebody said to me once, uh, actually one of the uh, greatest gifts you need as a regional team leader is the capacity to build friendship quickly. Uh, unlike in a local church, where you've got time to do that, in a regional role, you haven't got time to do that. You, you see people occasionally, uh, and uh, uh, they're quick encounters. You need to build relationships very quickly and develop trust. John, you, you have that capacity uh, to build friendship in a true, genuine, deep way. And I don't say that on behalf of others, I say that personally. I've not just valued your collegiality, but your friendship. And that's been very special. In all the miles that we've travelled together, as we've sojourned south, and we've been thankful when we've come back north, so to, re to, to the real world in which we live. Uh, and if uh, um, our, our colleague Phil was here today, uh, I don't know if he's coming later or what's happening, but who knows where Phil is? He could be anywhere, <laughs> couldn't he? Uh, so he'll be in some Best Western Hotel somewhere, no doubt. But, um, but... We, we've had uh, really helpful times together. We've been able to laugh together, been able to tease each other, particularly to tease Phil. We enjoy doing that. So, uh, but there's been true friendship that, that has uh, undergirded everything that we've done. Ministry is demanding, and I want to say that you need friends to survive. And uh, in the 10 years that I've been in this role, um, you, you've offered that gift to me, John. So I'm really thankful for that. Actually, that, that passage... Uh, that was read, um, Philippians. It was a passage that, that came to my mind. Not for the verse, the verse before, not being confident of this, that he who began a good work and will, you ca will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ, but the verse before, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. now that's the verse that really strikes me about you. Your partnership, not just your partnership, but your partnership in the gospel. From the point that I came into this post, right up until now. John, um, there's a deep sense of gratitude, national colleagues, uh, regional colleagues, but also personally, for all that you bought. And actually our friendship will continue. It's, it's not related just to being in roles and the collegial nature of it. It goes much deeper than that. But I'm glad that I've been able to be here today. I'm glad that I've been invited to say something. And I really want to say thank you for your, for your ministry and for your friendship. We've had a, a, a colleague from the past, a colleague from the present, and then we thought they ought to have something um, also from the council, and Jackie has very kindly 
agreed to come and speak. And then also uh, John Cooper straight after Jackie, uh, also on the council, but um, a younger minister. I hope you feel the compliment there, you know, <laughs> compared to me. Um, but uh, a relatively new person in ministry, and I thought that was a good spread to get you all the um, accu accusation, adulation? Yes, we do need to give you some adulation. Um, I went back to my first recollections, really, of kind of connecting with John, and that was when I was a leader at, at the Headland Baptist Church, where I still am. Um, and I had responsibility for getting preachers, and I was desperate for preachers. And so John came along. <laughs> but don't take that too seriously, John. But I guess the tables turned around. When they were desperate for somebody on the council, I got wheeled in. <laughs> um, but through my time on the council, which is since 2008, and it's time I was stepping out now, and next time around that will be the case for me, um, I was trying to think of John's many giftings, and if I just rattled off some of them, I know others of you would be able to add to that. But the things that came to me was, first of all, his intellect, and yes, he's a pretty clever, reverend doctor, um, and he has steered us on the council through endless reviews, strategies, procedural changes, but with the ability to simplify complex issues and make them manageable to the likes of me. And some others, I'm sure, would nod their head a little bit. I'm looking to Joe, hopefully. <laughs> uh, wisdom and vision, dependability, trustworthiness, relational skills. We've, we've talked about his ability to relate with people. But having that calm approach, um, patience, and an ability to manage any potential conflict that there that we would steer us through, John. A great encourager. I think everybody across the NBA would recognise and his knowledge that I've picked up really through the ministry group, particularly of the churches, of the people in the churches, um, and his care and concern for all across the NBA. Um, and last but not least on my list is a sharp wit that would often go over my head, but I would recognise it when other people were laughing. <laughs> um, but in, in using these giftings and more that you will all would recognise as well, I would say that what John has enabled us to do as a council particularly is to endeavour to live up to our strap line, building together for Christ's kingdom. Um, and a few years ago, it will be now, looking back, I used to travel to council meetings with a good friend of ours, uh, Marjorie Wheatley, and there was many times when we were in the car, we would go back and say, oh, John's done this and John's done that, full of praise for you, John, uh, and, and wondering how on earth you've managed it all. But the point that we would often come to was, when John retires, who's going to step into John's shoes? Who's going to be able to do that? Um, but actually, what I think is one of the really commendable things that John has done is that two years ago, he set in motion the process whereby we have reached that point now by him, his encouragement, his giving us of time and space, uh, and his stepping back to allow us as a council to move on and um, appoint, a tra I hope I get this right, even Haley Young got it wrong, Transition, tra transitional <laughs> strategic, <laughs> TSL, a transitional strategic leader, I've got it written down here. Um, so I would say it's not sim just simply about somebody uh, filling John's shoes. I'm sure John was aware of the need to break new ground uh, and to enable a vision to change us for these and future times, and we thank you for that, John, and I think it is commendable. Back to Headland Church for a minute. Um, not unlike so many of our smaller churches across the NBA, for whom John has such a heart, he has seen us at Headland through our ups and downs, like other churches, supporting us and inspiring us. And I have my own idea about the, the main point that I would take about what is so special about John, but I wanted to ask people in our church this week, so I, just pick, I didn't put them in a group or anything, I just picked out people so nobody would know what anybody else said. And the first person I asked, if you had to describe John in a couple of words, what, you, what would you say? And she said straight away, oh, he's so lovely. Is he, is he, you know. Somebody else who should remain nameless said teddy bear. And I won't say what Paul Revel said about that when it was mentioned before. <laughs> Caring and thoughtful, compassionate and wise. Other things were said as well, but the main thing that came through was the caring. 
And although such a gifted leader, John, you have the common touch, uh, always approachable, always making time for people, however trivial an issue would be, always making people feel valued. Uh, and that was what was, was the primary thing that I was holding on to, and it felt that other people connected with me on that when I was asking them. And I suppose I've said all this without mentioning God, although we did talk about Christ's kingdom. Um, and it sort of goes without saying, really. Uh, but I suppose in summary, it's about you being a godly man uh, with a servant heart. Uh, and one of the things that came up in discussion, I'm sure it's not confidential <laughs> from the council at all, but we're talking in one of our, I think it was in the council, at one of our recent meetings, we were talking about um, ministers and how much time they should have off. Uh, in the secular world, people usually get two days off a week, and should we be moving in that kind of direction for uh, regional ministry or whatever? I'll leave that as an open thing. But a point that really resonated with me was something that John said. First of all, Paul drew attention to the fact that in ministry, it's vocation, it's a calling. Um, and then something that John said was about even when a minister is in part-time ministry, and we have a part-time ministry, which is probably why it resonated for me a little bit. And we're always trying to make our minister slow down and stop. But you said that there may be a part-time minister, but they are wholly your minister in your church. And I think the thought that I wanted to leave last about you really was the fact that you have been wholly our regional minister, always there for us, even if your hours were supposed to be whatever, but always approachable, always there. And we really, as I speak for others, we've really appreciated that and I've appreciated that personally and our church has appreciated it. And poor Janet, apart from me complimenting you at the beginning, you're not much of a look in. But I have to say it, behind every good man is a better woman. <laughs> um, but I would guess throughout your married life, because of the nature of John's work, it's tended to be John and Janet. Um, I, f I first kind of knew of you through uh, coming to the assemblies and you were always on the receipt of custom there. Um, I know that you visited our church and helped us in terms of home mission, um, and you've helped ministers' wives and supported ministers' wives, and other people would be able to have a better knowledge of that and understand that better than me. But I would say you really have not simply been John's other half, but his partner. Um, you have quiet ways about you, <laughs> but you, I'm sure, and I'm looking at John, just <laughs> uh, really that you have been together as partners in sharing the gospel, really, in your different ways. Uh, you've come and to this place, really, uh, into the position that John's had for these 22 years, is it? Have I... 20, it'll be 20 years at the end of the year. Right, okay. A long time, anyway. And together, uh, you'll continue doing many good things, I'm sure. Um, so may God richly bless you both. Uh, in what you continue to do uh, in building God's, God's kingdom uh, in the future. And thank you both. Uh, and one last thing, by the way, John, we're still looking for preachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tony kind of um, stole my thunder, really, in the sense that I got an email a few days ago saying would you be willing to speak on behalf of the younger ministers and I thought well I'm going to turn up looking like a trainee Santa Claus it's not really going <laughs> to <laughs> you're not really going to wash but I think um, I want to start there I've only got a couple of things to say really John um, the last few years um, a few I mean, we've started this partnership in the northeast uh, with Durham University and uh, I was one of those cohort of people who went through that new system of looking for ministers for a new time and a new place. And although John's now coming to the end of his time in ministry, he's been at a time of transition for us and trying to hand over his wisdom and his passion and his character, I suppose, to those of us who have been in training. So I want to park that for a second. I want to say that one of the first times I met John was um, in Morpeth Baptist Church. We had a really, really, really tough time. 
the wheels had fallen off, as they often do, or sometimes do in churches. But the wheels had fallen off, and we'd reached out to Northern Baptist Association probably for the first time as a church. You know, one of those churches, once it's going well, you don't, you don't kind of reach out so much. But we had at this point reached out because the wheels had really fallen off. And Paul and John came and just helped us through that situation. And what you saw was the character of John. And, what, and I just wanted to highlight a couple of those characteristics that I've seen. And, you know, we've heard a lot of other ones. The first one was that John's a non-anxious presence. When things aren't going so well, John is a non-anxious presence. He exudes confidence, but not an arrogant confidence at all. The quiet confidence of somebody who loves God, who's somebody who knows that God is bigger than the situation, and who takes the time to speak into things well. Gives great advice, really helps out. And he's willing to be humble in situations to, allow, to help churches. And that's what we saw in Morpeth Baptist Church in this horrendous time. You are a non-anxious presence. But, you know, you get to know somebody a bit better. And you realise that all of us have different hats on at different times. So, through the time of uh, training for ministry and getting to know John a lot more, we've had some deeper conversations. And we share a bit of history. I, too, started life as a sparky. I, too, left school with... Well, I left school with two CSEs, so I don't know if that was more or less than you, John. But I yeah. oh, see. So I beat, beat you slightly by only having two. <laughs> like John, we're from, I'm from further down south. And we've kind of shared a little bit about that. But John's got this radical side to him that I think sometimes he keeps a bit of a lid on. Because he's always wanting to bring together people and, and things. So, so he's, he's not always the person who's at the centre of the situations that he's, that he's in. His own opinions, his own, his own, I suppose, preferences don't come out very often, I don't think, because he's, he's always trying to join hands across the room, if you know what I mean, and across the table. I suppose that goes back to his trade union days, but it also, you know, there's, there's a deep, passionate side of John about, um, about social justice and about things being right and things, and, and, and things being just. And I hope that, one of my hopes for you is that actually as you step out of this role, that you'll find your voice. So not speaking on behalf of the NBA, but speaking as John, because actually, John, I think you've got a lot to say. A lot to say to the Baptist Union, but a lot to say in whatever situation you're in. I hope that you find your voice to be able to speak out in that situation. And then, a few um, years later, after this problems that we had in Morpeth Baptist Church, I rang him up and I said one day, Hi John, it's John Cooper from Morpeth Baptist Church. I, I really feel like I'm being called towards ministry. And we met up in the, what's it called, the whatever it is, and pitcher across the road from the sage. John was going to play a saxophone, and we met up to, to just have a talk about it. And over the years, John has helped to guide a bunch of us who felt called to ministry in the northeast, being trained in the northeast for the northeast, because there was a desire with, with, with John and with Roy and, and alongside Linda Donaldson to see people in the north be trained up and settled in the north and that's what John has helped to happen over the last couple of years where there's this cohort of new ministers in the north and as we've had these conversations through that I just want got another little bit of advice for you John and that is don't take up poker there are times when you know the, those young ministers will we'll go to John and we'll say I've had this idea John I really think like this and John will stop and He'll think about it for a second before giving a really gracious answer. But you know, at the time, that your you kind of idea that you've had is completely bobbins. Um, <laughs> and John's got such a lovely way of guiding people to wisdom through what he says and what he does. So, John, I just want to thank you um, for all you've done for me, for all you've done for Morpeth Baptist Church. I know that that is going to be mirrored across lots and lots of churches, lots and lots of people, lots and lots of fellowships. You're going to be missed. And we just pray and hope for the both of you that you find peace, you find relaxation. But I know that you'll find something to do, a voice to speak and a place to be the character that you are in the centre of wherever you are. Because I don't think people can hold you down. Thank you. Thank you. 
Father God, we just thank you for John and for Janet. We thank you for a faithful ministry. We thank you for their love and their friendship. We thank you for the many blessings that they have been to us. And we just ask, Lord, that now you would just re John for the work that you've called them to do in the days that lie ahead, mm. that you'd continue to bless them and use them and use this couple, Lord, for the building of your kingdom. And we give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for John and Janet. We thank you for the different gift things that they've had. We thank you for the way that they have helped so many people throughout their ministries, starting way back in Belper and through many years. And Lord God, we pray that you'd bless them and your grace would continue to be poured out upon them. Mm -hmm. And we pray that, yes, you would liberate within them those things that you have for them in the future. We pray that the past would not uh, shape them in a wrong way, but Lord God, there would be a glorious liberty and freedom in the spirit to set out on new ventures, new journeys, uh, in the exciting uh, job of following Jesus Christ in the world today. Uh, pour out your spirit upon me, we pray now for that, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the constant source of encouragement that John has been, as we have said, to individuals, to churches, to this whole region. We thank you for his patience and his loving kindness, his support to people when they needed him. He appeared suddenly there beside people, and we thank you for that. We thank you for Janet and all that she has done in the joint support work that they've done in this area. Mm -hmm. we pray your blessing, Father, upon them now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, we, we thank you for uh, the many human attributes that, that John and Janet have, uh, that have been spoken about this afternoon, many more that could be expressed. But we thank you for, for the most important thing, which is that the faithfulness of following Jesus uh, over, over many years, the example, the model they've set for so many others, not, not through just uh, uh, the human skills which they brought to the table, but through the example of following Jesus constantly, faithfully, in good times and bad. We thank you that you've stood by their side, been with them, you've uh, spoken through them. And we pray that as they enter a new season of life, that, um, that that faithfulness and uh, new opportunities would arise for them to serve you in different places. So there's a sense of gratitude amongst us, but uh, we look forward as well. A great sense of thankfulness and excitement as all the future holds. And thank you for new seasons of life and new opportunities that come through them. We pray that you go ahead of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we pray that uh, as you go on this journey, John and Janet, that you may receive much joy, mm. a blessing, that in your uh, normal everyday life you will find excitement and new ventures and hobbies, and that they may be uh, something that bring you happiness. And we pray for you and your family as you go forward, that you may find everything that Jesus has for you in ministry and in home life, in his name. Amen. Amen. It was 2002 when um, I felt God was calling me to move from the pastorate down in Essex and I saw this advert for a part-time regional minister for mission in the Northern Baptist Association and this fellow called John Clayton that I had to call. We made the call, I think I made it for Mary and Brian's house in fact, um, and uh, my sister and brother-in-law. And um, part way through John said, I think we've met before. And the red mist came down. <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness, uh, when was that and what did I do? And uh, John followed it up in a further phone call by saying you had a spiral staircase in the house where we lived and he was absolutely right. Um, spiral staircase from the, floor, the um, upper floor up into the loft. And um, it then came out um, that though I'd seen a picture of John and didn't recognise him because he had turned from ginger to white, um, 
that uh, I'd been the church secretary at a church down in the Medway Towns. John had come to preach with a squint, and I'd rung him up and said, no, thank you very much. <laughs> Which was a good start. Um, uh, John and I worked together for 10 years, from 2003 until 2012, when I retired. And uh, we would, uh, because we became not just colleagues, but good friends, we would rib one another. John coming from a working class background, me from a middle class background, John from the shop floor and me from uh, uh, office work. Um, uh, him reading the Times and me reading the Daily Mail. Um, he having a, a master's degree and me not having one at all until I was in my 60s and then of course he got a doctorate as well. Uh, and that was something that we used to joke with one another about. As I did with churches when I would ask them who was the oldest, John or I. And without uh, any exception, they all thought I was younger than John. Well, in fact, if you worked out I retired in 2012, you realise I'm considerably older uh, than him. We had a very good relationship over 10 years. When we did a um, spiritual gifts analysis, I think at David's place, we found out that our spiritual gifts were almost exactly the same. Now that can be quite interesting when you're working together. And uh, we had some very frank discussions, I think. John would, they weren't heated, they were frank. John was always gracious enough to allow me to express my views. He would express his. And then at the end of the discussion, I would say, well, you're the team leader. Um, you've listened to what I've said. Whatever you decide, I'm fine with. And that shows a very gracious attitude, uh, that there was that openness between us. Um, we were always welcome at Sherburn. I think I partly lived there some of the time, and Janet would sometimes come in from her teaching thing, and, you know, oh, not somebody else in the house again. Uh, and we'd have a meeting, and then we'd have a meal with them, and then we'd go on to another meeting. So I, I do appreciate it, Janet, how we messed up your home routine so much. Um, John is a workaholic. Uh, if you didn't know that, uh, you should just see his diary. Um, he has amazing energy, which he's maintained over 20 years. I am in awe of it. Yeah, with the travelling to Didcot and all the other meetings that he did, uh, it was quite amazing how much he got on. He's given his all for God in service to the MBA over 20 years. Um, churches have been blessed. Individuals have been blessed by his ministry. And uh, it's appropriate that we come along and express our thanks to John and Janet backing him up. Uh, I was reminded of the parable of the talents. And um, I know that there will be future ministries for, for John and Janet, but um, for this phase of his ministry, I'm sure that Jesus will be saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Um, so I thank uh, John uh, for his input into my life. I thank God for his input into my life. And I just pray God's blessing upon them both in their future ministry. I don't bring any theology, but in the words of the great Ernie Wise, this is a poem, What I Have Wrote. <laughs> I sometimes join pen and paper if I have something to say, maybe as a thank you, get well, or to mark a retirement day. Now that John's ageing gracefully, with his flowing locks so white, I have to tell you, I saw him last week and his hair was down here, he's had it cut since then. <laughs> with his flowing locks so white, I'm not sure if he still plays squash. If his legs are good, he might. He served up north for 20 years, that's two decades, don't you know? And in that time, he's guided us to pray, to listen, and so, with an O, not an E. Yeah. I can wait, it's all right. <laughs> He's toured our local churches, played, advised and preached God's word. He's helped us out in numerous ways, enabling the gospel to be heard. And now it's time for Janet and him to take a wee step back. Won't it just be lovely, John, getting rid of all that flap? So soon you'll put those feet up, enjoy your garden view, Retirement is beckoning, beckoning, great times for Janet and you. 
Begone, you Zooms and agendas. Take a break from preparation. Hello, countless coffee breaks. Go plan your next staycation. Play the saxophone, beat the drum. You can do all that stuff at leisure. Feel free to say no to stuff. That gives one enormous pleasure. Please accept my observation from an experienced retirementee. Your diary will be just as full, but you'll do it all for free. <laughs> I think I met John first in September 1998, just after I'd arrived at Whitley Bay and we were at the Minister's Fellowship, which always met at Durham, and uh, John was the pastor there. And uh, it's important to remember that before he was regional minister, he was pastor at Durham. So he goes back more than 20 years, I don't know how many it is, but uh, sufficient. It's sufficient, yeah. So, it, it's, and I just want to thank Tony for asking me to do, I don't know why I was being asked to do this, but I, I count it a privilege. Um, I thought, what, what could I say? So, being a preacher, it had to be three points. <laughs> and having had David Lennox in my congregation for so long, they had to be either the same letter or successive letters. <laughs> so A, B, C. <laughs> How busy John is. And yet the amazing thing is how he always seems, when you need his time, Mr. Laid Back, and I've all the time I need to give you. And I want to say that as a pastor, as a minister, it's been great to have a regional minister like that, where one has felt able to ring up somebody and talk to somebody who, who understands, gets it, cares. Retirement will open up the vista to all manner of new interests. And as I thought about John, there's always something new came to mind because whenever I seemed to speak to him or especially if there'd been a gap though he'd all, he was always on to the next new thing um, and he, he, he I remember the time I mean he's a competent musician pianist uh, but I remember the time he said I've taken up the alto saxophone and I said well not many people can say that uh, and he said, well, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> but, you know, he's, he's progressed over the years. I mean, there, there came the point where it made a public outing, and then it made an outing in the company of other musicians. And, you know, it's, it's been wonderful. To, and, and we're going to hear the fruit of all that uh, time uh, in a while. The squash has been something, you know, I'm, do, I'm at the squash. And I have my squash time. Uh, he's, he's at the moment investigating the possibilities of what can be done on a computer using the Sibelius program, which is, uh, for those who are, are not enlightened, um, is about scoring and presenting music. And he, he's which I've watched a few times, and is a beautifully restful arrangement of um, what a beautiful world. With, with images of County Durham and uh, great blessing. So John's always fine, and I, I have no doubt that there will be all sorts of new things that you will find to do in, in retirement. The other thing uh, for B, Baptist through and through. You know, it's, it's the proverbial stick of rock thing. Cut John in half and it will say Baptist at any point. Either that or Kettering. <laughs> and one of the great blessings to me has been to have somebody around who's an East Midler, Midlander. And uh, we, we know our home geography a little. 
the odd thing was that back in the 1990s, no, it was before that, 80s, we very nearly ended up in a Methodist church. Uh, but I think you'd probably have led by it, left by it that time because we both left college in the same year, in 1984. But having come from a Methodist background, I was very, very lovingly at times when I was saying we could do this better, you know, and he would say, well, as Baptists. <laughs> and And... Part of being a Baptist is about collaborative working and for ministers, collaborative leadership. And John has, has been, has just acted that out, worked that out. It's who he is. And many of us have learned a great deal from him. He's enjoyed contacts with Baptists in other countries. Remember when we all went off to Texas? Sitting in that Italian restaurant um, in Houston um, at, at what was in our time about 11 o'clock to midnight being faced with the largest buffet of Italian food that I think any of us had ever seen. But what was so important was that there in the big middle of the table was uh, the bust of his, his good and close friend, Pope Benedict. And, uh, <laughs> the irony being that there'd been an assembly not long before at which somebody had said some very Pope a couple of weeks <laughs> before. But but that's another of the things I think about with John is his his ecumenical doesn't lose any of who he is as a not so much a Baptist as a follower of Jesus. And it's very interesting. His doctorate, I did think I tried to work an anagram out of this, but the title is so long. I mean, bound together in the liberty of Christ, renewing Baptist collaboration in ministry which is basically saying we all like to be free and independent as Baptists, which makes our objective of collaborating together more difficult rather than easier. And, 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 uh, and I haven't read the, the thesis to know that. What I have done is read the first two paragraphs of the introduction. <laughs> And riveting stuff. <laughs> and one day, I'll read it all. It's freely available online. You, you can go on, you can put Claydon, and you can put uh, Bound Together in the Liberty of Christ. And there it is, the whole thing. You can read it and have great fun. A way something. many in ministry in his role as regional minister and not just ministers but John's been a great companion to churches going through tough times and at times when they felt like throwing in the towel there are those congregations that have kept going and found renewal because they've had an encouraging regional minister in John. You've always been kind, interesting, interested, not interesting, but interested, <laughs> open, and a lot of that, I know, is down to the strength and support you've received from Judith. How about Janet? Uh, 
Oh, Jabba. <laughs> that one as well. Jill will tell me. Jennifer, uh, we would. <laughs> but we know that uh, he, he relies on your presence there and your support a very great deal. And he tells us his friends that. Not, not in so much as that, it's just in the way he refers and, and the way uh, he, he so appreciates it. Because they got a day like today, when can we say it? But at the end, all I want to say is that when I think of John, I can say, I know it's all been about Jesus. That's been John's motivation. And uh, it will continue to be his motivation. Just enjoy the time you're going to have. And don't feel you've got to fill every waking moment with work. Or even, I'm not sure Janet will appreciate this, practising the saxophone. <laughs> the writer of Hebrews says, let us run with perseverance the race for it, John. John, the, um, what's been spoken about John as a workaholic, I got an email from him later, or earlier this week, and it was 622. <laughs> I thought it was PM, but then but one of the many blessings which the Lord gives to us is our friends and their fellowship. John has been a good friend to Terry and I, to Lakeside, and to our NBA association. And it's good when we can enjoy friendship with equal amounts of affection and admiration. I affectionately tease John when greeting him with nicknames such as Young Ginge, JR and Doctor. This probably mildly irritates him, but he has graciously humoured me. There was one occasion I remember uh, graphically and fondly. Uh, John had invited Roy Murren and I to go to the BU conference at uh, Swanwick. And for the whole of the journey, I interrogated John with questions on the Holocaust, the uh, charismatic renewal, Roman Catholic spirituality, among other things. And the poor man was never more thankful to arrive at Swanwick. <laughs> If John had been a government minister rather than a gospel minister, he would have been described as a pair of safe hands. Reassuring, reassuringly on top of the fine details of process and procedure, reliably, readily available for good advice and wide, wise counsel. John is particularly good at reading a complex situation and making insightful suggestions to take the situation forward. John is good at sensitive small talk, putting people at their ease when they are with him. I remember well one uh, lunchtime meeting John in the undercroft of Durham Cathedral for lunch to discuss the possibility of my becoming a lay pastor at Lakeside. And eight and a half years later, John was there with Terry and I, giving us wise counsel and good advice when I thought that my ministry was coming to an end, but without any significant way forward in the church. And John has been with us at Lakeside this uh, past year, walk, walking closely with us as our moderator with his reassuring uh, presence exploring the possibility of calling Peter to be our pastor and minister at Lakeside. 
And one of the, the things that I've really enjoyed over the years is listening to John's public prayers. Always honest and sincere, warmly sensitive and pastorally caring, theologically insightful, spiritually nourishing, reflecting his intimate and winsome relationship with the Lord. You have led us, John, well over the last 20 years, humbly and graciously. You've been a good friend, a wise counsellor, a reassuring presence, and a constant encouragement. We're going to miss you a lot. And our prayer for you and Janet is that you enjoy your retirement as you lay down your pastoral burden and continue to grow and serve the Lord in the opportunities that he's going to give you in the coming days. Thank you very much, John. What are we going to miss about the Reverend Dr. John Richard Clayton? Well, here's maybe one thing that we may or may not miss, and that's... Um, excuse me a minute. John's commitment to fashion. <laughs> and uh, thank you to Janet for providing me with uh, one of the blue jumpers which, which make their appearance. And uh, there is a PowerPoint. Oh, it's back to front, isn't it? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I can't get away with it. But uh, the, the wool industry, and particularly the blue wool industry, would not uh, be in quite such strong health were it not for John and his commitment. Either you have um, a massive number of blue jumpers in your wardrobe, or you just have one or two that never get washed. <laughs> oh yes, I know the answer to that. Okay, so what else are we going to miss about John? Excuse me. I think we're going to miss Northamptonshire. <laughs> We're going to miss uh, comments about obscure football teams from Northamptonshire. We're going to miss references to railways. We're going to miss uh, anything to do with trains. And, and I, I sometimes wonder whether alongside your official capacity, your official job... Oh, we're going to miss John's interruptions with cuckoos going off uh, uh, when, when he's failed to silence his phone. Sorry about that. Um, Coming back to the railways, yes, I just wonder whether, as well as your official role, there is also a little clandestine role within the Baptist family, where there's this little, this little cell in existence where rail enthusiasts gather together and talk trains, and then periodically kind of surface and, and, and bombard the rest of us with information about railways. And I know there are more than one of you in the room today, so I wouldn't want to offend yes, you any further. Careful. But it would have been appropriate to have uh, today's gathering at the end of a railway platform with notebook in hand somewhere in Kettering if we've been able to do that. We're going to uh, miss your humour and uh, that comes out in the fact that we can have a laugh, we can play some fun jazz uh, and that's just naturally you and, and you, you uh, enable us all to be at ease. Uh, we've been talking about doing some jazz together for... Uh, uh, ever since I started with the NBA. So finally, after my seven years, we finally managed it. And it's a shame we've only managed it till now. But uh, to be a little bit more serious, um, and as we do know from John, as has been mentioned already, uh, John's sermons always tend to have three points, and they all begin with the same letter. So here are my three G's for us, okay? Uh, and the first G uh, are John's gifts, and we've already talked about many of them. Uh, but I just want to pick up on one which was referred to particularly uh, by John Cooper in, in the last uh, part of our gathering. Uh, and, and John talked about, uh, John Cooper talked about John Clean uh, as being wonderfully gifted at coming into a church situation, even a, a conflict situation, a very anxious situation, and just being a kind of person who can walk into a room and everybody else goes, ah, John's here. Uh, we've got support. We've got some. And you're dealing with positive things as well. But there's always that sense that we're in good company, we've got a uh, resource here when John walks into the room. And I've just noticed that around our churches. When John walks in, you just sense the confidence levels rise within the congregation. And we're going to miss that hugely uh, when you leave us. So many other gifts. The gift of hospitality, and I must bring you in as well, Janet, because uh, with Elaine as, as team, we've enjoyed probably 
more hospitality than many. In fact, there have been times when I feel I should just bring my overnight bag and just stay with you because I'm around so often. And it's felt like your home has been my second home at times. And it's wonderful to walk in through the door and just smell that freshly uh, made bread that's in the kitchen uh, and to know that we're going to have that uh, gift of, of food. But we're going to have that welcome that comes with it. And, and it's again, it, you both make us immediately feel at ease when we walk through the door. And that, that's a special gift. So thank you both for all that you've given uh, in your hospitality and your friendship with it. And uh, certainly if Elaine were to speak here, uh, you would want to mention that you're not, you're not just a colleague, you're not just a boss, but you are very much a friend. I'm kind of at a lower level than Elaine, actually, in friendship, because Elaine has had the privilege of all the time that she's been in the team of being Facebook friends with John. I wasn't allowed to be Facebook friends with John. He, he denied me that privilege. But I'm very pleased to say that uh, within the last couple of months, I finally received a, a friend request from, from John Clayman. I'm wondering whether to accept that. And I think, actually, from today, I'm going to say, John, I'm going to accept that friend request. And we can continue to be friends, and we will continue to be friends, I'm sure, into the future. Uh, and friendship lasts beyond working together, doesn't it? So that's gifts. Uh, moving on quickly, the second G would be growth. And, and we've already referred to this, that John is somebody who's committed to lifelong learning. Um, when we think of uh, uh, you know, what Paul's mentioned in terms of still learning new uh, techniques uh, to, to be a composer now on, on using the Sibelius software, uh, and, and, and to be doing new things. We know that as you go into retirement, you're going to be uh, experimenting, trying new things out, learning new things, contributing new things. And, and that's really admirable. And I've been inspired by seeing your ongoing commitment to try new things out and to learn new things. And I wish uh, I could be half uh, as enthusiastic about doing, these, uh, uh, doing things in these ways as you do. Uh, so you will continue to grow, we know. And others will continue to grow through what you experience as you go onwards from here. And then the third G, and this is a bit of a cheat, but then sometimes John's three alliterative things are a bit of a cheat. The, the third G, I have to use some Greek here, okay? Uh, and, and it's gnosis, okay? Uh, which means knowledge, usually in a negative way in the scriptures, but I'm going to say positively. John is an absolute fount of knowledge. We talked about the Baptist uh, um, heritage that he's able to conjure up at a moment's notice. Uh, what what John doesn't know about Baptist history is not worth knowing. In fact, most of what John does know about Baptist history probably isn't worth knowing, but he still knows it anyway. <laughs> and he delights to uh, tell us all about it. And, and it's great to, to know more of our heritage through John, to know what we are today does come from what we've been. And John has contributed so much into that understanding in our churches and for me personally. Uh, but of course, the flip side knowledge, and perhaps the, the even greater gift that you have is wisdom. We know the difference between knowledge and wisdom, don't we? Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing that you don't put it in a fruit salad. And uh, thinking of fruit salads and, and uh, healthy eating, I remember on the very first occasion you came to visit me, I managed to feed you something that was on the John Clayton red list of things that must never be touched or, or consumed at any cost. Uh, and very graciously, you, you managed to eat your way through... Uh, what was it I gave to you? Something with beans in it, wasn't it? A Chinese stir fry. And uh, pudding was uh, um, winter fruits. Right. I remember it. Yeah, yeah, you remember it better than I do. Uh, still, still, still recovering from it, aren't you, all these years later. But you graciously ate the meal that, that uh, you really didn't want to eat, uh, just out of your pastoral compassion on your first visit. Um, but uh, seriously, the wisdom is, I think, what we're going to miss the most, because uh, wisdom is attained through... Years of ministry, years of following Jesus, years of, of being amongst God's people. And uh, it takes a long journey to do that. And so we're just really appreciative of all the wisdom that you've been able to give. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Who am I going to get on the phone to when, <laughs> uh, when August, September comes round and I've got a tricky problem that I have no idea what to do with. And uh, I guess uh, Elaine will have to muddle our way through with Haley's help and with Tony's help and others in our Baptist family, but thank you for the wisdom that you have given, that I've benefited from, that we've all benefited from over the years. So a scripture verse to finish, and uh, then I'll hand back to Tony. Oh, sorry, that was wrong. <laughs> Apologies. This is uh, from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, and uh, the first, or well, the second, third and fourth verse. 
And Paul says to the church, grace and peace to you. And I want to say, John and Janet, grace and peace to you as you enter this new phase of life. You've been vehicles, channels of God's grace and peace to many, many of us. And may God's grace and peace be strong and with you in all that you go into. And then Paul goes on to say, we always thank God for you and continually mention you in our prayers. And I know, John, that is something that you do for all of us. Uh, whenever we gather, you have immediately brought to our attention issues going on in churches. And we know it's not just out of pastoral concern, but you pray for our churches, you pray for our ministers, you pray for all of us. And I want to encourage us to pray for John and Janet, not just today, but onwards uh, as they go into their new life. And then Paul says, we remember before God and our God and Father, your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We've heard about the labour and the work. I don't need to add to that. But thank you for your endurance that you've kept going for, for this long time. And I'm sure there'll be many times, probably, when you might have looked at other roles and other opportunities, but you've been able to serve us for such a long time. It's almost as if Mr. NBA is leaving the NBA. What was the NBA without John Clayton? It's hard to imagine it. And so as my last passing gift, I feel I ought to give you this, John. And I'm sure you don't have one of these. Uh, but it's my last copy of David Neal's History <laughs> of the Northern Baptists, just in case you need a reminder of what we've been through together. <laughs> and if you've already got a copy, or, or 200 in your garage, you can give that to somebody else uh, as a gift as you go onwards. So thank you, John. Thank you, Janet. Thank you for all that you've been to us as a team. And uh, we are going to miss you hugely, but we are going to stay friends and keep in touch. God bless you. Father, we just thank you for John and Janet, for all that they have given to uh, your mission and ministry. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for the friendship down the years, the fellowship, Lord, in which ministry has been shared, the missions that have been undertaken, the people who have grown in Christ, the people who have come to Christ. And we pray, Lord, that as you have stored this up as treasures in heaven, it will be something that, Lord, not only we will be able to thank you for, and John and Janet thank you for, but, Lord, they may receive one day that wonderful statement, well done, my good and faithful servants. And we pray this blessing upon them now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to say a, a brief thank you. Uh, let me start again by echoing our thanks to our friends here at Enon. Uh, thank you, you've done a stunning job with the food, and thank you for, for that. And personally, thank you for the way we walk together at different times, sometimes closely and sometimes not so close in the sense of not needing to be engaged. But uh, throughout most of my regional ministry, and actually before I was having engagement with the church, at Enon. And I think, John, um, one of my early inductions was uh, John Prothero, and I think your sister Mary might have been here for that, because John had the minister from Northumberland Heath, but I'm not 100% sure, um, as the speaker. Um, so thank you very much. Clearly, I do want to say I'm grateful to God for calling me to the North East. I never, ever, some of you have heard me say this before, I never, ever anticipated being anywhere near north of the Tees. Um, in fact, I told the superintendents that, you know, between the Thames and the Tees. So they sent my name to Durham and also to Torrington, which is not between the Thames and the Tees either. Uh, geography wasn't their best uh, subject. But I'm grateful to God that he did call us to Durham and after six years into regional ministry. And you know, I'm grateful to Janet because you can't do that kind of ministry easily without the support of a partner. And uh, Janet, uh, you know, I've been away several nights. I've missed meals and in lockout, lockdown time. I was almost said lockout time, but lockdown time. Um, you know, we've, 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 you know, that's, we haven't, I haven't been away. Or have once, once now, haven't I? I've been away one night without you. Um, but we had so many meals together. Uh, all good meals, by the way. Excellent meals. <laughs> but nights away and all that sort of stuff. And uh, as I said earlier. 
Um, everything, just about everything that you've read from me will have been proofread by Janet. And if you've got mistakes in, it means I haven't asked Janet to proofread it. And uh, so I'm grateful for all of that. I'm grateful to you. Um, Nelson said after a battle, and I don't want to suggest that this has been a battle, okay, <laughs> I had the happiness to command a band of brothers. I don't think I've been in command, so it's not the issue. But I've had the, the happiness of working with sisters and brothers together in, in the service of the Lord. In the North East. So I, I forgot to mention this earlier, but uh, uh, if there's a verse I want to, or just a saying to leave with you, it is from Galatians. And I'll be preaching on it tomorrow, Michael, so you get the full you get the full version tomorrow morning. Walk in step with the Spirit. God bless you. Thank you. And thank you, Tony, for organizing all of you who shared tonight. Thank you. John and Jack.